Summer was already a great time to try out cycling for the first time, but was it looking like COVID-19 is going to hang around for a while yet? There's never been a better time to go down to the shed and dust off your old bicycle, or potentially treat yourself to a new one from your local bike shop. Like when you try anything for the first time, getting into cycling is going to pose a lot of big questions. Now in this video I'm going to answer some of the most pressing ones that we've been presented with over the past two months in the hope that it makes your experience of getting out on the bike and turning those pedals an easier and more enjoyable one. So without further ado, let's get into it. While we'd always recommend getting a bike that fits you properly, we know that buying a new one isn't always the solution, and the bike you have might be the one that you're dusting off for the first time in 10 years. Happily, there are a few adjustments you can make if your bike feels too big or too small. For starters, you can fit a longer or shorter stem in response to whether your bike feels too big or too small. Stems are also reversible, so by that I mean you can swap them around or turn them upside down so they point upwards rather than a slight downwards angle. You can also try adjusting the saddle height and you can often slide your saddle along the rails creating a shorter or longer reach. Getting the right fit on your bike is key, so be sure to set the right saddle height. For clarification, that's the length from the bottom bracket through to the centre of the saddle. There are loads of methods to get the right saddle height and we've linked to a video below showing it in more detail. As a rule of thumb though, when your foot is on the pedal, you want a slight bend in your leg. It's also important to get the right fit in terms of your reach. This is how far your handlebars are from your saddle. Likewise, you want a soft bend in your elbow rather than a straight arm, and you shouldn't feel like you're putting enormous pressure through your hands either. Like I mentioned earlier, you can adjust this via stem length, which will bring you further away or closer to your saddle. If you're on a drop bar bike, then getting the right handlebar height is important too. The higher it is, the more it will feel like a flat bar bike, which might feel less agile or speedy. The lower, the more pro or aggressive the setup. Really, it's trial and error to find what's right for you, but if you want to adjust this, then do it over time so that your body has time to compensate for the changes. Whether you're grabbing it out of the shed for the first time in 10 years, or your new bike has arrived box fresh to your doorstep, all bicycles need looking after. If your bike feels sluggish or slow, then it's worth checking the tyre pressure, because a flatter tyre will increase rolling resistance, which makes it difficult to ride at speed. Ideally, you'd use a foot pump to check the pressure using a gauge, but if you don't have one, fear not. You can use your thumb and forefinger, and if you can just depress the tyre, then you're in the right ballpark, and it should make riding much speedier. There are a number of reasons why your bike might feel wobbly. It could be that the wheels have come loose. If you can grab them and move them side to side, then make sure to check the skewers are tight. This is a problem that presents itself more in older bikes or bikes with rim brakes, which use quick release axles that can slip out of the bike's dropouts. Alternatively, your bike's headset could be loose, which creates a knocking noise at the front of the bike. You can test it by pulling the front brake and seeing if it makes a knocking noise. To fix that, you need to loosen the stem's side bolts, then tighten the top bolt of the headset before tightening the side bolts again. Be sure to check that the handlebars are straight once you've tightened them all back up again. If you are grabbing your bike out of the shed for the first time in years, or you have questions about it, then it is worth taking it down to your local bike shop where they can give it a proper once over, especially if you're not confident in your bike mechanic skills. They will check it over and make sure it's safe to ride. Not all cyclists can drive, which isn't a problem, but it does mean that not all cyclists understand the rules of the road. Now, if you are going out for the first time and you don't know what they are, then we highly recommend that you read the highway code. As a rule of thumb, however, all cyclists must use a working front light and a working rear light if they're riding between sunset and sunrise. Likewise, all bikes must have two working brakes. Both the front brake and the rear brake must work. Now, a fixed rear wheel does count as a working rear brake, but it must be paired to a working front brake to be legal. You must also stop at all red traffic lights. There are no rules in the United Kingdom that state that we can pass through them. So just like traffic, we must also stop. We also are not allowed to ride on the pavement. Cyclists are also allowed to ride to abreast. So no matter what people might yell at you when you're out on your bike, 
you are allowed to do this. However, there are times when it is safer for you to ride in single file, and it's about recognising those moments and adjusting your riding habits to fit with them. All cyclists must also be able to signal both right and left comfortably and safely when out on their bike. If you don't feel like you could take one of your hands off the bars to do this to show your direction, then we recommend practicing somewhere safe until you feel confident enough to be able to do it. My advice here would be don't bite off more than you can chew. But in general, one of the best things about cycling is that it is incredibly efficient and you'll be amazed at how far you can go. Start off with about a 10 km ride and see how you feel and push it on from there. Loads of my friends have bought bikes for the first time in the past month and started out riding 10Ks and are now riding closer to 40 or 50 km confidently. It might be easier to think about it in terms of time. Start with a half an hour ride and see how you feel. Pushing on from there is a great way to build up your strength and fitness. However, we do recommend that if you go out for longer than an hour that you take some water and a snack. Ultimately, the best way to build up your cycling fitness is to ride your bike as much as you possibly can. Building up to bigger and bigger distances is one of the most enjoyable things about our sport and it's really addictive and it can give a huge sense of satisfaction. There isn't really a correct speed, it's more about what you feel you can manage. For context, a Strava data set has shown that in the UK, the average speed for men is 25 kilometers an hour or 16 miles an hour, and the average speed for women is 20 kilometers an hour or 13 miles an hour. Building up your speed is one of the other really enjoyable parts about cycling. And for context, we consider anything above 25 kilometers an hour to be pretty fast and anything above 30 kilometers an hour to be really quick. One of the main problems with punctures is that they're pretty unpredictable and it's not really possible to say how often they happen. However, there are times when they are much more common. For example, in the winter, you're far more likely to suffer from a flat tire and if it's been raining or particularly windy. This is because all of the debris that's usually on the verges and on the trees falls into the road. Now you can spec different types of tyres and some are more robust than others. As a general rule of thumb, the less robust a tyre is, the quicker it is to ride on and the more robust it is, often the harsher or potentially the slower the ride quality. However, in the winter, many cyclists do swap to more robust tyres to help prevent punctures when they're out on cold rides. You can also set your bike up tubeless if your wheels and tyres are compatible. This is where you take your inner tubes out of your tyres and replace it with sealant. And the way this works is that when the tyre carcass is pierced, the sealant goes to the hole and seals it to prevent air escaping. If you are heading out the door for the first time on your bike, then we highly recommend that you practice fixing a puncture before you go out. All cyclists need to have some level of self-sufficiency and fixing a flat is one of the most basic things that you should be able to do. This is an age-old question that's really quite difficult to answer because it depends on what you want to get out of the bike. A drop bar road bike will cost more than a flat bar hybrid bike and in general, the lighter the frame, the more expensive the bike will be. You can pick up a pretty good bike for around 400 to 500 pounds that will do you well if you're just getting into the sport. However, if you're looking to start trying to push yourself, then we'd recommend starting at around the 800 to 1000 pound mark. If you love the sport and you've got a bit of cash to burn, then there are loads of great options above the £1,000 mark. And you should definitely check out Cycling Weekly's website for all of our latest buying advice. So there you go, they are some of the most burning questions people have been asking us over the last couple of months. If you do have any others that you'd like to know about, then do let us know in the comments section below and we'll do our best to answer them for you there. And if you have liked this video, then please do subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel. Now we'll be back soon with more great content, but until then, take care and we'll see you soon. Hmm.